Let me tell you a little story about agriculture, the Chesapeake Bay, and an up-and-coming technology called the subsurfer. Agriculture is a real important part of the Chesapeake Bay region. With more than 84,000 farms in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, agriculture is at the heart of the region's familiar landscapes, robust economy, history, and culture. What you may not know is, agriculture has also been a leading partner in efforts to clean up the bay. This unique body of water is threatened by nutrient and sediment runoff from the region's cities, roads, forests, and farms. As cleanup efforts have ramped up, livestock farmers have been working to improve the way they apply livestock manure to farmland. As you might imagine, land application of manure is a very sensitive issue. Manure contains important nutrients that help crops grow, so recycling it makes sense. But manure is spread on land where tillage can't be used to work it into the ground. Its nutrients can easily wash into waterways or serve as a source of air pollution. More than two-thirds of farmland in the region is no-till or permanent grass. A quiet revolution has been occurring with manure application. New applicators with low soil disturbance are gaining ground. This revolution has now expanded to include a dry manure subsurface applicator. Dry manures generally have less than 30% moisture and cannot be forced through the plumbing of conventional liquid manure injectors. The major source of dry manure in the Bay watershed is its poultry industry. Each year, more than 600 million broiler chickens are raised in the Chesapeake Bay's 64,000 square mile watershed. That manure is just sitting right on the surface. You don't have it in the soil. Recently, USDA's Agricultural Research Service developed a subsurface application of dry manures specifically for no-till and grassed soils. We call it the subsurfer. Early research in Pennsylvania and Maryland showed that the subsurfer decreases phosphorus and nitrogen in runoff by more than 60% compared with surface application in the same soils. In Maryland, there were even corn yield increases with the subsurfer. With interest from farm and Chesapeake Bay communities alike, we've been extending our research with the subsurfer to key locations in the region. Our goal is to provide farmers with a reliable method of placing dry manures below the soil surface in no-till and forages. One day, we hope that the use of the subsurfer technology will be a common practice among farmers across the Bay watershed. Working with manure is no easy thing. Trying to get any manure into the ground without tillage is no small task, especially when it comes to dry manures. The subsurfer is unique, but its parts aren't new. The subsurfer uses common no-till parts and a system of augers to move, grind, and place dry manure under the ground, typically around four inches deep. Over the past few years of testing the subsurfer in five of the Chesapeake Bay's six states, we've come to learn what works and what doesn't. We'd like to share our lessons with you. The kind of material you put in the subsurfer really affects its performance. While the moisture level of a manure shouldn't be above 30%, other manure qualities are important too. The subsurfer was developed in Arkansas where rice hulls are a common bedding. They're small and uniform in size. Here in the Chesapeake, wood shavings are common. But bedding materials can really vary. Our best performance has been with litter that was dusty dry and fine textured. Materials that hold their form, either because they are wet, have fibrous bedding, or tend to sort into different size classes present a problem. Catching under augers, building up at grinding points, or clogging chutes. 
New configurations are needed to handle the different litters of the region. If you look inside the hopper of the subsurfer when it's empty, you can see the bed of augers that is used to move and grind the poultry litter. Some litters bridge the augers. Other times, the augers tunnel their way through a litter. Sometimes fine materials build up under the augers. We've identified at least four solutions for litters with different qualities, from minor adjustments to major changes in the auger design. The augers aren't the only thing we've been watching. The subsurfers incorporating components work to provide a chute for the litter, cut residue, shatter the soil, and maintain a furrow for the litter to fall in before it's closed. The subsurfers no-till coulters, discs, and closing wheels generally work well, but they can stand some adjustment to account for different soils and different crop residues. We designed the subsurfer to tow down the road without facing wide load restrictions. This has limited how much litter can be placed in the hopper and how quickly litter is applied. Our partners in the private sector have identified options for coupling subsurfers to expand capacity. New auger and incorporating designs promise to increase the speed with which litter can be applied. All this is important to gaining voluntary adoption of the subsurfer. So, let's step back and get a broad view again. We've found that the subsurfer minimizes nutrient losses, helping farmers to improve air and water quality while increasing nutrient use efficiency by their crops. This isn't just good for farmers in the Chesapeake Bay watershed, it's good for everyone. But we do need help engineering the final solutions by specialists in the auger and no-till implement design and manufacturing field. We believe in this technology and hope that you do too. We're asking for your assistance to help our team move forward with momentum. Let's make a difference, people. What do you say? <laughs>